All right, here we go. Board seven in our 10 board robot challenge. Uh, just a quick recap. We're doing okay so far. We haven't had any real... Well, we had one weird result, which was the last board we played yesterday, board six, and that was the robot just kind of bombing off to a six-heart contract um, that, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, wasn't that great. <laughs> all right, But we can expect a lot of this stuff to be happening at the other table because it's all robots all the time. Uh, my question is here, what do you open? What do you think the robot will open on this hand? And I will tell you that you should open a no trump, and I would... I would be shocked if the robot did not also open one no trump. It is absolutely, absolutely important to be opening one no trump with your 15s and 16s and sometimes your 14s that have five card majors in them. You five cards in any suit. If you're five through three, two, you should default to opening one no trump. If you're 17 plus, excuse me, I'm not plus. If you're exactly 17 with a five card major, you should open that major, but then bid two no trump. You're always gonna treat these hands, you're always gonna treat these hands as balanced, right? So with 15 or 16, we open one no trump. With 17, we open one and then rebid two no trump, okay? Open one of your major, rebid two no. So here with only 16, we're gonna open a no trump. Ooh, partner is transferring. And here, this is interesting. You usually only super accept with 17, and a four card holding, but here I will clearly super accept with only 16 because I have an extra heart. I'm tempted to bid four, but I'll only bid three because I want to give partner the leeway to just pass with their worst holdings. But here, instead of passing, they make a control bid. So this is kind of cool. What do we know about partner's hand based on this bid? The answer is we know two things. We, we know, well, three things. Really. We, they're interested in exploring slam and we couldn't be happier. We have a super maximum. They have first round control in clubs. Now the, the robots take an antiquated or maybe more of a basic approach, which I can appreciate, especially dealing with, you know, with advancing players, you kind of want to have a simplistic approach, but they play that these control bids, this four club bid, only show first round control, which is an ace or a void. The more modern method for you and your partner should be first or second round control for these bids. But the key thing to recognize is when they're making this bid, and the reason we know it's a control bid is we've established two things. We have a fit and we are playing in game at least, right? So this four club bid is, hey, I know we have that fit. I know we're playing game in hearts. I have first round control in clubs. That should excite us, by the way, for two reasons. Number one, we should know we do have one loser. It's in spades. However, that's the only loser we're looking at in our hand. And partner is trying to play slam opposite a hand that, yes, we've shown a maximum in four card support, but we have an extra heart and we've ruled out any club losers already on this hand. The question is, is the spade wasted or not? We don't know. Wait, wait, we partner hasn't shown anything other than just control and clubs and interest. So here, I want you to decide what you would do. And I'm going to give you my choice in about three seconds. So again, guys, as always, if you need to pause, go right ahead, take your time and just press play when you're ready. But I'm going to tell you that on this hand, I would just bid for no Trump, right? I don't have any quick, two quick loser situations. And I really want to know about the Trump suit. That's a very important holding to know about, not just the key cards, but maybe the queen of Trump. However, should I be concerned with the queen on this end? Let's ask that question. We definitely want to talk about key cards. King of Trumps, obviously, is a really crucial card to find out about. Maybe we know part, partner doesn't have the uh, ace of spades or avoid in spades, right? So they're not going to have that control or key card. Right? So we can at least have a little more specificity when we ask this question. But the answer about the queen is we don't have to worry about that at all because we know we have at least a 10 card heart fit. Partner has five of them. We have at least five. The queen is irrelevant. We have the queen, basically. When you have that number, you have the queen. So here, whether or not partner has it, and they do, they have two with the queen. Oh, good. Ooh, east. What's east showing, guys? Partner bid five spades, and east is doubling. What the heck is that? By the way, partner's five spades, two with the queen, as we know. And here... It doesn't matter if they have the queen. We knew we had it anyway. We're kind of upset that that's two wasted points, maybe. This double is lead directing. So the ace of spades is to our right, which honestly, I like that, right? Because it means it's going to go spade to the ace. And guess what? I have two tricks in my hand. Boom, 
right? Especially if partner has any shortness there, we might get some pitches. So here, when partner bids five spades, I'm going to give it six hearts, right? We are missing a key card, but we knew that, right? We knew we were missing that. And we should also recognize when partner's willing to play slam opposite our hand and we like it this much, it's probably a good idea to at least explore. And let's see that spade lead. There it comes. Oh, beautiful. All right. So the the weakness in diamonds is is kind of offset with the super strength in our spade holding. We're going to get to pitch those two diamonds over there. It's going to be a fast play, guys. We're going to claim as soon as we get the lead, which is right now. All right. Beautiful hand by partner. Well done. All right. So interesting. If we go back and take a quick peek at this after they load it up here. Uh, again, another score we shouldn't be that excited about. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. But here, this is a, a nicely done uh, piece of bidding by partner, except in, in a more realistic sense, uh, they would bid three spades if they were going to go about their hand this way. Uh, but maybe in, a, in another spot, they could... Uh, they could Texas and maybe could do it that way, but they're they're kind of on, in the mix here. Or sorry, in the middle here. But once we super accept, it would have been much easier if they were able to bid three spades, and then we could still have a key card auction and get to six hearts. Uh, very good slam, obviously. We want to be in these that are so easy to play. All right, but when we look at this, it's the same as board five. When I look at board seven, I should not say, wow, we're going to crush these guys. You know, that's not a great score because it's so obvious that they need to be there, right? And and this is the also the luxury of if you're playing in the Nationals or things like that or in any good regional, having good teammates is always a good thing, right? Because you can expect them to get to these. But really, how could they miss this, right? If in a normal auction, uh, if, we, if we pay attention and we bid it normally, we should be playing these slams. And we would be shocked if they're not playing this at the other table as well. Okay, uh, this time, interesting, <laughs> another, this technically, again, the rule of 15 situation, I didn't address this the first time because we opened two diamonds, but here, you usually would add your high card points to the total number of spades you have in your hand. If it comes to 15 or higher, you should be bidding, you should be opening the bidding. If it's less than 15, you should be passing. And here, this is a time where I honestly... <laughs> I'm interested. I might want to pass this sometimes, but there's there's upsides and downsides to to all this. The the big upside is we should recognize that this someone has spades, right? So it's unlikely if I open a diamond that the the opponents aren't going to bid spades on this hand. However, you know, partner could also have a five card heart suit, and we could be making game in hearts. I have a solid fourteen. I have an easy rebid. Um, if I had less values, I would. Well, let's put it this way. If I were in a real game, I would probably pass this more often than not. But this is a best hand tournament, and it's a best hand tournament where I have an opening bid and a rebid, and maybe an outside chance of a major shoot game, all of which lead me to believe it's right to open, and I'm going to open a diamond. I'm going to be really upset if the opponents find spades. <laughs> and as, as it turns out, partner just has spades and diamonds. Um, interesting. All right, so this is what we what they're calling a support jump shift. And and this is why it's super helpful when you play with the robots, don't dismiss their call as something. Just look at it when you're not sure. So here, it, because they're a past hand, they're saying they have some sort of like invitationalist hand with diamond support and rebidable spades. Not shocking, by the way, that they have spades. Uh, I mean, I don't know what to do here. Let's see what three clubs is going to be. All right, let's just pattern our hand out, see what they do. We wouldn't mind playing three no if it's possible. Uh, but here, yeah, they're just bidding three diamonds. I mean, I don't think I'm missing a game here. Let's just let's just float this. I mean, I, who knows what the heck's going on in this one. All right, so it looks like yeah, five clubs is pretty good, huh? It's five diamonds, excuse me. Uh, okay, that's unfortunate. We might have lost a little bit on this one, but we'll see. Here, I'm just kind of unblocking clubs while I draw some trump. And that was the trump drawing. Now we're going to pitch some hearts. And we just have a whole bunch of tricks on this one. We can basically almost just claim this out. Um... I don't know. Let's see if they'll get funky with this one. They will not. And here again, just a kind of a normalish cross rough. 
is taking our tricks individually. We're very upset. <laughs> We're very upset that we didn't bid. Uh, oh well. All right. Plus 170 in a minor series is never the best score. Um, yeah, I guess I could have raised uh, over diamonds, but we'll see what the opponents do. Oh, look at this one. This is weird. Uh, and this is what we'll start off with tomorrow, actually. I've, <laughs> I'm losing myself in the challenge. I'm about to play the next board, but take a look at this ad. This is where we're going to end the week tomorrow morning on Friday. Uh, figure out what you might want to do. Take a picture of it. Do whatever you want. I'm going to take a, a quick peek at this last hand and just see where... Maybe we could have gone a little bit better here. My three club bid, I guess, yeah, it just it it didn't uh, it didn't really show anything extra. Here, partner bid only three diamonds with this beauty here. I, I mean, it's hard for them to figure out what to do. I guess any bid by me might have produced a, a better score if I bid four diamonds. Yeah, not not the worst, right? Tough hand though. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate. Partner only has two hearts. If they had three, we were just losing three rippers right off the bat. And partner's ace of spades looks wasted, but ended up being okay for us as well. Okay, so I don't know. I mean, that last one and board six are the only ones I have questions on. I guess we'll find the answers together tomorrow when we get our results. But uh, take a look at this hand, guys, and, and bid it with me tomorrow morning. Uh, for those of you guys watching on YouTube, thank you for enjoying the, this uh, challenge, at least uh, as we started out. We're going to have the finale tomorrow, which we'll finally see the results of this. And I think we're, we're, we are rate to be okay, except for maybe board six and eight. I don't know. We'll see what they did at the other table. Um, and uh, we'll see if we can prove victorious against this, uh, this robot this week. So, guys, I will see you for the finale tomorrow morning, and we'll see you for the, the second challenge next week starting on Monday. Thanks a lot, guys.